So hello everybody, welcome to this uh, new Ecotoxicomonic uh, webinar. So today we are pleased to welcome uh, Theofana Shonova, uh, who defended the uh, PhD thesis during the last summer in the University of uh, Innsbruck. And uh, now Theofana uh, works at uh, INRA uh, Tonon. Uh, and she will present uh, today a PhD work concerning uh, pharmaceuticals in uh, freshwater environments and their effect on microbial biofilm communities. So if you want to uh, ask uh, questions to Teofana, you can use the chat box uh, with the webinar. And at the end of the presentation, we will uh, uh, read the different questions and uh, Teofana will answer. So don't, hesi don't hesitate to use uh, the chat box. So Teofana, let's go. So thank you for the introduction and thank you also for the invitation to, to present my PhD thesis. This is a great pleasure for me. Um, as uh, Stefan already said, that was a collaborative work between the University of Innsbruck and the research station INRA in Tonon Leban. And my PhD supervisors um, were the professors Rainer Kurmeyer and Paul Ilmer from the University of Innsbruck and also Dr. Agnes Puget from INRA. So as we already know, fresh waters uh, are very important as they are hotspot of biodiversity but also vital for humans. However, um, unfortunately, in the last uh, decades, the pollution of uh, freshwater environments is continuously increasing and nowadays, um, Freshwater environments are often used for conflicting purposes, like, for example, the release of uh, wastewaters from in the same environment, which we use also to take water for um, drinking water production. <clears throat> in the last decades, uh, the pharmaceuticals became uh, emerging contaminants because um, actually after intake, we don't fully metabolize them. We can excrete up to 90% of the molecule unchanged, depending on the compound. And in addition, several metabolites, which can have different uh, toxicity and different effects on the environment. Once excreted, those molecules uh, will go to the wastewater treatment plants, which are not specifically designed to treat them. So a big part of them finally can reach the environment. And when we talk about um, wastewaters, the contamination is not uh, the same in all wastewaters. And it depends a lot, a lot of the origin of wastewater. As uh, the example of hospital wastewater, for example, you could have up to 150 times higher concentrations of pharmaceuticals and much higher variety of molecules. Well, uh, those molecules, they reach the environment chronically all the time and uh, they can pose a problem because already they are made to be bioactive at low concentrations and we can find them in a complex uh, mixtures of molecules and byproducts whose effects are very difficult to comprehend and to follow. In this study, um, we focused on environmental microbial biofilm communities as they are sensitive to changes in the environment, chemical, physical, and biological changes. We know that uh, um, they are huge diversity and uh, ecosystem functions are important for aquatic ecosystems. Um, so there are already some evidences of uh, different studies that pharmaceuticals will influence um, biofilms, like for example, will cause decrease in photosynthesis, increase in bacterial mortality rates, or will um, change the community tolerance uh, to toxicants. Um, however, it's still challenging to disentangle all those effects. And during my PhD, I focused specifically on two groups of um, periphyton communities. That's the bacteria, which are known to be sensitive to specific pharmaceuticals like the antibiotics, and diatoms as excellent, uh, that are known as excellent bioindicators, and already several um, indices have been developed uh, to, uh, to evaluate water quality. So it's uh, important to better understand um, the, um, uh, the links between the presence of pharmaceuticals and uh, the diatom changes. 
During my study, I had the opportunity to work on a unique uh, study site, CPBEL, which is located um, in the French Alps. And it's unique because it treats separately urban and hospital wastewater, which is usually not the case. This separate treatment will allow to compare the two treatment lines, but also the effects um, of the wastewaters or the treated wastewaters to the environmental biofilms and also to follow those effects in the recipient river. The treatments were uh, the same in both basins. However, the hospital wastewater was 15 times lower than the urban one, which caused higher retention time and higher oxygenation in the hospital basin. And this site is also specifically important because downstream from the river, um, uh, water is taken for production of drinking water for Geneva City, so it's of interest to, to keep the water quality good. And talking about the study site CPBEL, so this was a larger project which included several working groups and also uh, observatory for regular monitoring which was very interesting to exchange with the different partners and uh, study their different uh, research questions and uh, link them between each other. Um, we focused on the one side on the micropollutants in wastewaters and the wastewater treatment processes and on the other side in the framework of the project Persist Env on the um, uh, effect through different uh, configurations through time. There was a separate mode of treatment, but then they mixed the treatments and they also had a fully mixed treatment and partially, partially mixed. In my study, um, we only looked at the separate treatment and we concentrated at the sampling points that are located in light blue on the graph. So the objectives, uh, first we wanted to evaluate the transfer of pollutants from the wastewater to the recipient river, hypothesizing that we will find higher concentrations of pharmaceuticals in the hospital file. And we also expect to see some increase of uh, pharmaceutical compounds in the river downstream from the wastewater treatment plant. Once uh, we have more information about those chemicals, we wanted to examine the effects of those treated effluents and specifically of antibiotics to bacterial and diatom um, biofilm communities. Uh, looking at the biofilm community changes in the treated wastewaters and then the effects uh, on the biofilms in the natural environment, the recipient river up and down stream from the wastewater treatment plant output. And finally, we wanted also to know if those changes are linked rather to pharmaceuticals or maybe to other environmental factors. So to answer this question, we performed several sampling campaigns. On the one side, we uh, performed um, water sampling, collecting uh, 24 hours composite samples from the wastewaters and treated effluents, and also from the recipient river as shown on the graph. Those samples were used for chemical analysis of nutrients, COD, TSS, etc., and also for 15 um, pharmaceutical molecules. In addition, meteorological data and also hydrological data like wastewater treatment plant discharge and river flow were also recorded. In parallel, we wanted to record better the concentrations of pharmaceuticals, so we used passive samplers, um, which actually are exposed to a defined period of time in a certain location, and then they collect uh, the, the micropollutants that will pass. Um, the advantage of it is that um, it allows to capture um, pharmaceuticals in trace concentrations, which are under the limit of detection when we measure uh, their concentrations in water sample. And also, um, specifically for wastewater treatment plants, we can easily have spot pollution events because of specific hospital treatments or uh, punctual releases that uh, can be missed even in composite water samples. So in that case of a wastewater treatment plant, it was also interesting to, to catch this type of uh, spot pollutant events. We exposed pauses, pauses uh, six times from February to July, each time for one month in the locations mentioned in the graph, so in the treated effluents and also in the river up and downstream from the wastewater treatment plant. In parallel to the passive samplers, 
We also um, installed cages with previously autoclaved biofilms, which were then used to um, collect the bacterial and diatom uh, biofilm communities developed on them and to analyze them by high throughput sequencing. And we wanted also to focus a bit more on the river because here we only have two locations. So uh, we, we also looked at the long-term um, biofilm uh, colonizations uh, from far up to far downstream in the river. And this time, um, biofilms were exposed not for one month, but for six months from 2012 to 2015. So it captures a big higher uh, range, uh, range of, uh, of time and also uh, a gradient on the river. So uh, now I introduced uh, different uh, sampling uh, configurations, but in the coming slides on the results, you will also have this small schema with the study site and with the corresponding colors that will remind uh, which location we sample for the results that I present. So it will be easier to, to follow. So coming to the results, first I will talk about the transfer of pollutants from the, from the wastewaters to the recipient river. And as you can see here on the left graph, um, the pharmaceutical concentrations that we measured for the most molecules seem to be higher in the hospital wastewater. Underlined in red, you see the antibiotics measured and um, I put an accent of them because from all the therapeutic classes studied, the, for the antibiotics, uh, the difference was the most important. They were 20 times higher concentrated in the hospital comparing to the urban wastewater. Uh, which can, of course, cause uh, problems um, like bacterial resistance and so on, which was studied then by another research group. So then um, removal rates of pharmaceuticals were overall higher in the hospital file, um, but still, as you see on the graph on the red, uh, surrounded by a red square, total concentrations of pharmaceuticals still um, remain higher in the hospital treated effluents. So I hope that's clear enough. Uh, the hospital is always in red and then if concentrations are higher in the urban, um, it will be um, noted with uh, green. So concentrations in both of them are higher in the hospital, wastewater and treated effluent, but um, here I want to remind that uh, the hospital wastewater had much lower loads. So the urban wastewater is 15 around 15 times higher the the load of urban wastewater so uh, we were interested to look at the total um, load of hospital and urban contaminants to the, so the urban and hospital load to the total load of contaminants and uh, this is presented in the figures below uh, on the left for wastewater and on the right for um, treated effluent and as you can see yes here it there is already a different trend showing that um, the urban contribution of the total load is higher than the hospital one. Still, for uh, you can see that for pharmaceuticals, around 30% of the contamination comes from the hospital, which is relatively high also comparing to other studies. And uh, this is much higher than other groups of uh, studied compounds like surfactants, metals, and nutrients. Well, after treatment, it looks already better. The hospital contribution is around um, 10 to 15 percent. And um, we are not anymore on the first place. So the treatment was quite good. On this PCA, you can uh, follow the situation um, in the recipient river. Um, you will see in red that the location closed downstream from the wastewater treatment plant was characterized by higher concentrations of uh, all the compounds and also phosphorus, whereby um, upstream concentrations of uh, the, the location upstream was rather uh, characterized by higher concentrations of nutrients. Mm. 
or of nitrogen uh, groups. And uh, if you look at the blue circle, this is the far downstream site, which is located between both. So it shows that we still have higher contamination than upstream, but lower than close downstream, which shows the good in-stream removal actually of the pharmaceuticals. So here I'll continue to talk about pharmaceuticals, but this time not in the water column, but collected in the passive samplers, and we will see that they show similar trends. So uh, comparing urban in blue and hospital in gray, you will see that um, still there are many molecules higher concentrated in hospital. Still some, com some compounds were higher concentrated in the urban treated effluent. Uh, but the trend for antibiotics remains clear, here noted in black circles. Looking at the recipient river, again, we could record an increase in pharmaceutical concentrations for, for all the molecules measured and also for each of the sampling uh, dates. So then uh, let's see how the biological components will change. Um, and here we will look um, at different uh, at the differences uh, between urban and hospital communities. And first I will talk about the bacteria and then I will go to the diatoms. So looking at the bacteria communities in urban and hospital treated effluents, you could clearly see that uh, both richness and diversity, but also community structures were very different between the two basins. And um, the most abundant group was uh, proteal bacteria everywhere, but we could still, um, but, and when affiliating at the general level, we could find uh, some genera that may contain uh, pathogenic groups and that were higher concentrated in urban and hospital treated effluents comparing to, to the river sites. There was also a seasonal gradient very clear, clearly presented for the two treated effluents. So coming to the river, we could see similar trends. Communities were different in the two locations and you could see a clear decrease in uh, diversity of uh, bacterial communities downstream from the wastewater treatment plant. Looking at the long-term uh, exposure with the four sites from far up to far downstream in the river, um, it was interesting to see that still there is a separation between upstream and downstream communities. However, far and close upstream communities were grouped together. We couldn't see any difference but downstream, close and far downstream communities formed two different groups. This might be because of the different intensity of, of pollution uh, coming from the station and the in-stream removal, which will then influence communities differently. Um, in the recipient river for bacteria, we also observed uh, some, uh, some trends uh, from winter to summer. But this time it was less uh, obvious or less clear comparing to the treated effluents. So then we wanted to look a bit more in details into the bacterial communities. And uh, this is an upset diagram that is an alternative to the Van diagram. So it shows uh, unique and shared groups between community, between sites. And what we could find here is that a high number of OTUs are either unique for one site or um, omnipresent, meaning either present or in all sites or in both river sites plus at least one of the other locations. Then we could find that the highest intersection was between river sites, which is okay, not very surprising because both are natural communities and there is some influence from the wastewater treatment plant, but still most of these remain shared. And um, what was more surprising is that urban and hospital treated effluent, they shared only 182 OTUs. I expected more because both of them are waste, I mean, both of them are treated effluent and both of them might have also some uh, rejection from the basins, which is expected to have not the same communities, but still to share, um, to share, um, 
higher number of uh, species or OTUs common. So finally, we could also see that uh, urban and hospital treated effluent communities shared more OTUs with downstream than with upstream. And so we had the question, uh, is, is it linked to a transfer? And to study better this, we performed a source tracker analysis in which we consider the river downstream communities as a sink community, um, receiving, uh, receiving uh, OTUs from source communities, in this case, urban and hospital communities. So what we could find is that, it, that up to 5% of uh, river downstream communities were found uh, to be, uh, well, as contribution from urban or hospital communities. And we also observed a clear seasonal gradient with uh, increase um, of, um, of this contribution for winter months. And this increase corresponded well to the dilution factor of the wastewater treatment plant effluent to the river because river flow increased in summer and um, uh, treated wastewater, the amount of treated wastewater decreased. So um, this can explain this seasonal gradient. But then a still highest part is unknown. So um, we perform the same analysis again, but this time including also river upstream community as a source community to see what kind of percentage will be common. And uh, here you can see that, yes, as expected, um, highest part of the river downstream communities, they, they have a common OTUs or that can be seen as contribution from river upstream communities. But still, um, we still can see this uh, contribution of urban and hospital communities here. And finally, the question was, okay, we could see some changes. Could those changes be linked to pharmaceuticals? So we performed an RDA analysis to look, the, to look at the um, to look at the relation between uh, bacterial communities and um, the other parameters that we had available. And so what we could find is that river downstream communities seem to be higher related to all groups of pharmaceutical compounds on the right of the graph. And upstream communities were higher related to um, rather dissolved organic carbon and total inorganic nitrogen. So then I will come to the um, diatom communities. And looking at the diversity of diatom communities, we could see that uh, diatom diversity was much higher in the recipient river comparing to the treated effluents, which is also not very surprising because, well, river is more their natural environment than treated effluents. And uh, looking at the community changes, we could also see clear differences between urban and hospital communities and also river communities. And what's also interesting to see here is that river downstream communities are closer located to the treated effluents comparing to river upstream communities. So we might have some transfer or adaptive development, which we'll also see in details in the next graphs. A seasonal gradient was clear in this case as well, especially for the river. And so then we looked in more details at uh, those uh, diatoms we found, affiliating them at general level. And what we found is that uh, groups, groups with rather eutrophic preferences were clearly dominant in the urban and hospital treated effluents, and such with oligotrophic uh, preferences rather in the river. And then we affiliated those genera to ecological guild classes. And the ec ecological guild classes um, is a separation of diatoms in four different classes, depending on their way of attachment, on their size, um, and on their resistance to different um, factors, to different disturbances. We have the motile diatoms that are quite um, small and that are able to move into the biofilm and opt optimize their place. So. Uh, 
thanks to that, they will be able to adapt better to higher nutrient and micropollutant concentrations. Then we have the low profile diatoms that are very good um, attached to the surface and are also quite small species so they will not be um, they will not be influenced by higher turbulences uh, by increase in water flow and so on and again we have the <laughs> more or less opposite of low profile it's the high profile diatoms that will be bigger that will grow out of the biofilm and that be easily washed out if there is a stronger water turbulence or um, increased water flow so um, we affiliated our diatom genera to those classes and what we could find is that the motile guild that was um, clearly better adapted to higher pollution was clearly dominant in the treated effluents um, and then looking at the river we could find all guilds so the situation was much more equilibrated and uh, it was also interesting to confirm again this uh, this increased water flow in the summer um, that will probably wash out uh, high profile diatoms and so you will see an increase in rather low profile diatoms in warmer months <clears throat> In the next step, we were also interested to look um, at the phylogenetic tree and to see if indicator groups for each uh, of the locations will, um, will be located differently on the phylogenetic tree. Mm. And so, um, first we took uh, three of the four sampling sites urban hospital and river upstream and we performed an indicator species analysis um, which allowed to identify indicator audios for each of the locations which we will see with the site specific color here on the graph in blue for urban in black for hospital and in green for river upstream and then um, yes we we color them in the phylogenetic tree and what you can see that is that for example for urban and for the hospital a big uh, phylogenetically close clades are missing so for example for the urban below um, and for the hospital uh, at the height of navicula for example and then for the riverside well uh, we could uh, follow the phy phylogenetic tree a except for Craticula, we could find more or less um, more homogenized situation. Then um, we took those colors and we transferred them to river downstream audios if they were found in the river downstream location in order to visualize the contribution of each of those sites to river downstream. And as you can see, um, big part of uh, the indicator audio still um, come from the river upstream, but still along the whole phylogenetic tree, you could find indicator audio for the urban or from the hospital treated effluents. Meaning that again, you will have either a transfer or adapted uh, development of those community that will change river downstream communities and as diatoms, are used uh, to evaluate water quality so of course there is the question will these changes change the the overall quality of the water estimated by the diatoms so we calculated the biological diatom index to see what will give us and indeed we could see a very poor to poor quality of the water in the two treated effluents as well as a clear decrease in the river downstream from the wastewater treatment plant. So finally again uh, the question comes back <laughs> is it linked more to pharmaceuticals or to, to, other, uh, to other pollutants how these changes can be explained and uh, this time um, we performed again an RGA analysis to answer this question but um, we included um, all parameters available, so pharmaceuticals, nutrients, but also um, temperature, um, so all, all measurements of the meteorological parameters, and so on. And um, 
automized forward selection, selected the, the two parameters that will explain best, um, diatom changes, and those were uh, synthetic variables explaining the shared variability between beta blockers and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs on the left and antibiotics and phosphate on the right for the hospital. Uh, synthetic variables, maybe it's confusing. We choose uh, to create a synthetic variables in the first step of the analysis in order to eliminate very high correlations. It was the case for three groups, so those two and uh, the temperature and the solar irradiance. Uh, which um, allowed them to, to have a more stable um, input model for the analysis. So I think that that was already enough information. <laughs> so I'll just make a short summary. Um, so uh, the first hypothesis is looking at the pharmaceuticals in wastewaters. Yes, they were higher concentrated uh, before and after the treatment but we shouldn't forget about the contribution of pollutants, which is still remaining higher from the urban treated effluents. Um, so then we could see an increase in pharmaceuticals in the river downstream for all the molecules, despite the quite good um, treatment of the wastewater treatment plant. We could also see community changes, both for diatoms and for bacteria. So both communities were different in the two treated effluents and um, also clear differences were visible uh, in the river from up to downstream from the wastewater treatment plant. And finally, the analysis performed showed that there is a potential effect of the pharmaceuticals on those community changes. In the perspectives, um, um, I think for me it would be interesting to also confirm those results with experiments under controlled conditions because as noticed earlier it's very difficult to disentangle um, all the parameters that might influence uh, environmental communities and um, also all confounding factors so it, it could be maybe a good idea to go further in this and uh, perform some experiments in the laboratory. And in addition, I would also like to explore more the functional changes in biofilms as uh, until now we worked more um, on just community changes level and diversity level. And then um, it would be also very interesting to increase the, the sampling scale in order to be able to identify some indicators of diatoms or bacteria which could potentially um, give a sign of uh, strong pharmaceutical pollution. And finally, I would like to thank to my thesis supervisors, Rainer Kurmeyer, Paul Ilmer, and Agnes Pouche for the opportunity they gave me to work on this project, and also to Jerome Labanovsky for his involvement in the project. And uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you for your attention.